so today we will see an important topic the buckling of plates so on comparison with the different buckling of different structures like the column beam the beam column and so all those were one dimensional so as you know the plate is a 2d element and hence the bending of plate will be in two planes and there will be two independent variables so you need a partial differential equation which represents the bending behavior of the plates and also on comparison with the previous structural members which will reduce the strength upon the critical load we have the steel plate or any plate in general whose strength will be reserved even after the buckling which is called as the post buckling behavior of the plates and we can generally classify the plates into thick plate thin plate and membranes so if you go through this pdf which i have shared which have the induction part in the first phase which clearly tells you regarding the change of behavior in the plate the two two way bending on comparison with the one dimensional element and the various stresses acting on the plate so you can find the plate here and we have s direction we have the y direction we have the z direction and consider a small infinity symbol a uh, small depth of h if you take a element from the plate the various stresses acting on the element will include the normal stresses sigma x in the x direction sigma z in the vertical direction sigma y in the along the y direction and these symbols are assumed to be positive that is actually in this figure the z is downwards the positive the top word uh, force sigma z will be positive right uh, sigma x will be positive and sigma y which is focusing out of plane towards us will be the positive value and there will be the various uh, shear stresses like tau x z which represents the shear in the z direction in the sorry uh, shear in the y z plane z y z x plane and tau x y the shear stress in the x z uh, y y which is in the uh, x z plane sorry it is in the y z plane so those uh, are the things regarding the rotations of uh, different uh, symbols of the shear stresses as well as the normal stresses and the total depth is dz and so far we have seen the uh, general plate coordinates as well as the normal and shear stresses the general stresses which act in the plate so generally the uh, plates can be divided into three the thick plate the thin plate and the membrane the thick plates will have the transverse shear deformation and the thin plate we can uh, actually neglect the transverse shear deformation and the membranes will take the load by the axial action that is there is no bending stiffness for a membrane element so in this module 
uh, we are more focused on the thin plate where there is uh, no transverse shear component and hence we can assume it to be in a linear differential equation so we have two assumptions uh, regarding the behavior of thin plates that is the shear strains gamma x z and gamma y z are negligible and the lines normal to the middle surface prior to bending remain straight and normal to the middle surface during the bending it's like the pure bending uh, assumption and the normal stress sigma z and the corresponding strain sigma epsilon z are negligible and therefore the transverse section at any point x y z is equal to the transverse deflection of the corresponding point x y 0 along the middle surface so basically the uh, normal stress is also and the corresponding strain uh, epsilon z which is in the vertical directions are very negligible so we are assuming it to be in a, a planar action in addition to the limiting analysis of thin plates we have the following idealizations so we are these are the assumptions and these are the idealizations and that is the transverse deflection of the plates are small compared to the thickness of the plate thus the middle surface stretching caused by the bending can be neglected that is membrane action resulting from the flexure is negligible compared to the flexure the material is homogeneous isotropic and it obeys the Cook's law so uh, coming to the uh, differential equation of uh, plate back line uh, we, have, we have here the different uh, stress and axial force component of the plate the nx uh, ny nx uh, uh, left direction so this will be positive and uh, this will be also positive and we have the z direction in the downward direction the positive one is upward direction as we have uh, we have seen here the sigma z positive will be the uh, positive top, top direction and the uh, shear stresses all are shown here for a plate uh, for a uh, linear theory case and we have the deflection uh, w which is very small uh, given and for the equilibrium of the in-plane forces taking the moment about the x and y we are dividing the uh, force in the uh, in the z direction the components of the ns forces will be equal to so we are taking in the z direction uh, this downward direction the component of this nx force is equal to nx into dou w by dou x plus dou square w by dou x square and dx all into dy minus nx into dou w by dou x into dy so this uh, times will get uh, cancelled and 2 will cancelled and this will be the final equation for the components of nx in the z direction similarly we have the component of the ny in the x is the direction uh, which is uh, shown here as a full equation and uh, we know that the n xy will be equal to ny x and so by clubbing this uh, 6.1 and 6.2 so adding the terms in this one and 6.2 we will get the resultant equation as nx into dot square w by dot square plus ny into dot square w by dot y square plus 2 nxy into dot square w by dot x dot y into dx dy so as of now uh, we have considered only the uh, in plane forces on a plate element uh, as uh, shown here and these are the uh, corresponding uh, curvature and the component in the is a direction and the plate will be having uh, the action of the slightly bent plate would have in the action of moments and the shears also and we are focusing on that now and uh, the equilibrium of bending moments twisting moments and shears in the plate so we have in this plate in addition to the uh, 
in plain forces which we have detailed before we have the other forces here and the components of the shear forces in x and y directions are negligible and we are focusing on the z direction uh, the components of the shear forces in z direction will be given by dou of qx by qx uh, dou x plus dou q y by dou y into dx dy so this is the 6.4 equation and now clubbing the in plane uh, forces equation 6.2 uh, then so yeah, this is actually the modified equation so adding of these terms to the its components of the middle surface forces given by the 6.3 uh, we have the equation uh, 6.5 so we have the 6. Uh, Five equation clubbing uh, 6.3 and 6.4 and the condition that the sum of the moments about the x-axis must manage gives uh, taking the moment about the x-axis will give the uh, these components will give you uh, dou m y by dou y into dy dx and all these terms and if the higher order terms are neglected uh, we will simplify this uh, moment equation to dou m by by dou by minus dou m x z by dou x minus q y is equal to zero. Similarly, the moment equilibrium uh, about the about the y will give you dou m x by dou y dou x minus dou m y z by dou y minus q y is equal to zero. And so we have the equation on uh, six point five considering all the in plane and the bending forces, bending shear forces. And we have the taking moment about uh, x and y, we have 6.6 and 6.7. And differentiating the 6.6 and 6.7 uh, with respect to the uh, y and x will give you the new equations uh, 6.8 and 6.9. Substituting the 6.8 and 6.9 equations into the 6.5 equation, uh, which will give you a, a long equation, uh, which is the single equation of equilibrium from which the shear forces have been eliminated. Thus, we have a set of equation uh, and the equation 6.10 contains the four unknown coefficient mx, my, mxy and w which is deflection. To obtain uh, a solution, it is obviously necessary to have three relations in addition to 6.10 among these variables. Since it is not possible to write any more equations of equilibrium, the additional relations will have to be obtained by considering the deformation of the plate. So as told, we are uh, now focused on the moment displacement relations. We have the uh, normal and shear stresses corresponding to the bending and twisting moments as shown in this figure. And the uh, mx, my and mxy values are given with respect to the axial uh, components as uh, 6.11, 6.12 and 6.13. And we have the from the theory of plasticity, we have the equations uh, epsilon x, epsilon y, and gamma xy. And we are converting uh, these 6.14 to 6.13 equations, or the equations in terms of uh, sigma x, uh, sigma y, as well as the uh, tau xy as an equation 6.17, 6.18, and 6.19. And uh, now we have the displacement components. Uh, in this equation and we are actually uh, there are two ways of uh, adding the displacement which is one is due to the in plane forces which is constant over thickness and the other one is due to the bending so we are uh, actually uh, converting the uh, establishing the uh, relations between the strain and the uh, the notations for the base displacement and we are getting uh, the equations as uh, 6.22 epsilon x is equal to dou u v by dou x and similarly in the y direction epsilon y value and gamma x by values. So those equations are uh, obtained and uh, represented as equations of uh, 6.27, 6.28 and 6.29.
the relation between the strain and the deflections and now we are substituting the equations of the six set of equations in the 6.17 6.18 and 6.19 which are uh, these equations uh, which we derived from the plate uh, theory of velocity which is converted to sigma x sigma y and uh, these values and we are expressing to this equation the this epsilon y epsilon x and uh, gamma x y so those equations substituted and we are obtaining new set of equation 6.30 6.31 and 6.32 again uh, substituting all these uh, equations into the 6.11 6.12 and 13 it's first equations of this uh, derivation part uh, which is in this equation set up the relation between the bending moments and the axial stresses uh, will give you the uh, modified equations as uh, 6.33, 6.34, and 6.35 mx, my, and mxy, um, where we have a shortening d is equal to h cube by uh, 12 into 1 minus v square. And all these set of equations, which were the unknowns for us, mx, my, and mxy, are substituted uh, in the equation uh, 6.10. To get the total solution with a single uh, unknown variable which can be solved and uh, which is treated as the differential equation for the plate buckling which is given by d into dot raised to 4 w by dot x raised to 4 plus 2 into dot raised to 4 w by dot x square dot y square plus dot raised to 4 w by dot y raised to 4 is equal to nx into dot square by w by dou x square plus n by into dou square w by dou y square plus 2 nx by into dou square w by dou x dou y. So this will be the uh, differential equation for the plate uh, buckling and uh, we will see in the next video on the different action of loads on this plate with different boundary conditions and how to solve for the buckling loads. Thank you.